Welcome to Excalibur's Outdoor America. I'm Steve Greer. Thanks for stopping in today. You know, over the last 20 years, I've had the privilege of hunting all over the world, having adventures in North America, South America, Africa, all sorts of places with great people. And each week we have the opportunity to share with you great hunts and great excitement. But some hunts mean more than others. And just a couple of years ago, I went to Kentucky unusually for the first time. I met Byron Marlowe, who runs a program down there that gets kids out of the inner city and during the fall also helps out wounded warriors. And it was such an inspirational story last year with Larry Drawn, a corporal who had had severe injuries in combat. We decided to go back because these soldiers that are coming home, it's not always an injury that you can see. Sometimes it's an injury that you can't see. They've been emotionally affected by the scenes that they've seen in war. So some of the hunts that we join in on are much more important, much more inspirational, much more moving. And that's where we start today on Excalibur's Outdoor America. I served uh, six years in the Army. I was 11 Bravo, so I was an infantryman. I did uh, one tour of duty in Iraq, uh, where I served for just over a year. Wounded warrior events are near and dear to my heart. You know, having served in combat arms, knowing guys that were hurt, knowing guys that were injured, I think it's important to give back. Um, a lot of these guys need positive outlets. You know, most of our folks are coming right from warrior transition units, um, where they're getting treatment fresh out of the combat. So. We are working with great partners like Kentucky Fish and Wildlife, Hunters for the Hungry, uh, and Kentucky Utilities to get these guys out of the hospital and into the field for great events like this. Personally, I think a lot of these guys, they, they not only need physical healing, but they need mental healing. And, and what this event does is it gets people out and helps them to find positive outlets for whatever issues they have. And, and so a lot of these guys, you know, so I've never been a hunter, yeah, I have a leg disability or you know leg amputation, but I can't do sports that I did before. So we're just trying to get guys out of the hospital, into the field, and uh, help them to find positive outlets. For this event, we have five people that have never been hunting before. Uh, so you have guys that are looking for new hobbies, new ways to get out of the hospital, um, and this is a, a pursuit that they can still do despite their disabilities. A lot of people told me when we set this up, you're doing that opening weekend of gun season? They say you're not gonna have any volunteers, you're not gonna have any help from anybody. Um, we had over 100 people at our, our keynote banquet last night, and we have had over 40 volunteers for this event. This is opening day of gun season in Kentucky. Uh, we probably got 20 volunteers on site that are actually helping with this program. We've got people that are actually with the hunters. We've got people that are going in and retrieving the deer for them. We've got people that are processing the deer. Uh, we've got people that are, are cooking lunch. So. Several people volunteered and gotten involved in this. This event could not have happened without our volunteers. We do have some awesome staff working on this, but the volunteers are the horsepower that made this event happen. It's ordinary people like you and I that can make a difference in somebody's life, whether it's a veteran or an elderly person next door. You can make a difference, and we all have to be ambassadors for the sport of hunting and fishing. We have to show people that, you know, we're good people. We're involved with hunting and fishing. We're willing to help our neighbors. We pay respects to those that have served our country. And coming up, Clifton Pettyjohn will take his first wounded warrior hunt in Kentucky for whitetail. This is a hunt you don't want to miss for a lot of reasons. For Clifton Pettyjohn, this time in Kentucky is a time of healing, a time of hope, and a time to look to the future. I've never killed a buck before. I've, I've took three, three doe and four doe in the past two years. Never, I've had a, a shot on one, but wasn't really a clean shot and it came out here today and you know we saw a buck early but it was still kind of dark so we couldn't really couldn't really get a good clean shot on him it kind of got away from us but we had another one come up and you know it just happened to come in between two trees and uh, you know it just opened up to the right spot and pulled the trigger and Running. Did it go down? I think, seriously, I think that buck is right over that little bank right there. I think he's right over the hill. He just, uh, he went head first over that hill. I think he's laying right there, so. Clifton's a great guy. We've had a lot of fun today, a lot of laughing, cutting up, and, uh, you know, I'm just glad, I'm glad he got the opportunity to get the buck he did. It was exciting for him, me as it was him, I think, so. Clef, look what you oh, did, son. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, boys. You've been rubbing. All right. Congratulations. Yeah. Good job. 
Sweet. Outstanding buck. Let's Outstanding. Come over here for some awesome pictures. If, yeah, don't mind. Sure, Dragon. Where you want it? Uh, right over towards the river, buck. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That's my first buck. Is it? That's my first buck. Well, you couldn't you have picked a better one. Down. Yeah. I'm sorry. You couldn't have picked a better one. <laughs> that's awesome. What do you think of that? Hey, uh, that, that's some good stuff. For my first buck, I'm excited for that. Man. Yeah, yeah. Time for the grin. Hold that crap. Time for the grin drill. <laughs> Take a week to get the grin off his face. You know, today's experience has been just wonderful. I think just to have a friend like Cliff Petty John that um, has, you know, stepped up and took it upon himself to help serve our country, and and then come back home and needing needing some help as as well. And you know, I'm glad that I was having the opportunity to volunteer with Wounded Warriors so he can have a great experience. And because I mean, he deserves it, and every single one of these veterans deserve that. It's great that there's programs like these because um, just from not only the physical pain from the injuries but the emotional pain with the PTSD, it's hard to even get out of bed in the mornings and have motivation to do things. And um, I just started hunting a few years ago um, and you know I, I absolutely love it now. I get out in, in the woods and it's like all my problems just kind of disappear when I'm out hunting and you know it's the best therapy that I've had and I think it's great that organizations put things on like this for us. Um, like I was saying with the physical pain but the emotional pain, um, you never know what someone's going through and programs like this that allow us to come out and do this and to be part of it, you know, it very, very easily could have saved someone's life this weekend just from this event alone. You know, some you know, suicide is a big problem with with returning vets, and a lot of that is because they don't have an outlet. They don't have anything that they can do to to offset some of the the PTSD and the and the depression. And you know, getting out and doing this and being around other vets helps out a lot. And you know, I think just think it's a great program, and I think everyone that has been a part of it. When a guy deploys to a combat area, in your mind you have a vision of coming back a hero, uh, to a hero's welcome with, with American flags and huge audiences and, and the hero's welcome. You think when you go to combat you're going to come back a hero. Um, each one of these wounded warriors came back on a medevac heli helicopter where they then went to a hospital and got countless hours of treatment. Part of my reasoning for planning this event is to get these guys out of the hospital and give them a hero's welcome and let them know that we really appreciate what they've done for our country. Thank you, thank you. I tell you, Cliff, that might be your first and I've killed maybe 20. He's as good as anything I've ever killed. <laughs> Man, I just appreciate it. they let us come out and, and do this. See that? that may have made my, my whole year right there. <laughs> What we were after. I'm gonna mount that buck and have it downstairs on my wall in, in my house. And you know, every time I look at that buck, I'll, I'll never forget this day. I'll never forget it anyway, but you know, it's, it's definitely gonna mean more. That buck's gonna mean more than any other buck that I would have taken. Those are the kind of stories that make a difference in people's lives. And again, as I mentioned, we're ambassadors in the hunting and fishing world. So when you have the opportunity, reach your hand out, shake the hand of a veteran and say, we appreciate your service. When Memorial Day comes around, enjoy it, but remember what it really means. Because these folks have put their lives on the line and the kind of support that was shown in Kentucky is the kind of support they need every day. Good stuff. When we come back, we'll head to the Barnes Keith Ranch where I'll try to close the deal with an Excalibur crossbow on a beautiful Texas buck. Stay with us right here on Excalibur's Outdoor America.